Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa wala rabbish shahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdatam min lisani ifqahu qawli rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaba nar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi Welcome everybody to our very special Black History Month session today with uh, Imam Siraj Wahaj Dr. and Dr. Mingal Qasim. Uh, this uh, is something that uh, we're really honored that both of these esteemed guests have joined us. One from our community, Dr. Mingal, of course, and Imam Siraj, we will consider him to be from our community as well, even though he is in America. Uh, inshallah, we'll, we're really blessed to have these gatherings. Uh, you know, we would love to have them in person, inshallah, one, uh, one more time soon enough, but this at this moment will suffice. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the format for today is very straightforward. We'll have Sheikh Siraj Wahaj address us, uh, make points about what uh, celebrating Black History Month means to us as Muslims. What does it mean uh, generally for people and specifically as Muslims, how do we uh, celebrate and commemorate this month? And then we'll have Dr. Minal Qasim then facilitate a discussion between the two. Neither of them need an introduction or a bio. So I'm going to skip that part and I'm gonna go directly to Sheikh Siraj. Sheikh Siraj, please take it away. Jazakallah khairan. You want assalamu alaikum? Can you guys see me? Yes, yes, please. absolutely. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salama ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so you brought it right to me. I thought we were going to have some uh, a conversation. So, so you handed it off to me to do what? To give you salams? <laughs> you know, uh, Sheikh Siraj, uh, uh, let's let's make it informal, and I'll be happy to just engage in this conversation if you uh, so wish. How no, no, that? no, no, this is what I thought that you wanted. See, yeah. I'm just, you gotta remember you guys, I'm just, I'm just a guy yes. who's here to accommodate whatever you want me to do. Okay, okay, so. Uh, so what I understood, what I understood that they want to have like an interaction, you want to basically ask me questions and, and, and things like that, but I'll be glad to do what you want me to do. Okay, okay, uh, with permission of Sheikh uh, Arij, uh, I would like to, uh, you know, get into this conversation right away because we don't have Imam Siraj every day. Absolutely, you know, take it away. Uh, take it away. Yes, Absolutely. but I, I want, I want to, to, to make a correction uh, to the introduction. You know, I do not consider myself in this Zoom meeting a guest equal to Sheikh uh, Siraj Wahaj. I'm only, I'm only uh, a student trying to speak to his teacher, and I've said it quite often, and I want to get out of this meeting as much as we can. So uh, just, I wanted to make that very clear. Now, Sheikh Siraj, I, uh, you know, I, I want to, uh, to mention this. Over the last two years, I got honestly sick and tired of Zoom meetings, okay? Uh, you know, I don't know whether this will be the new norm for dawa which will be just basically someone sitting comfortably you know in the warmth of their office or 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 house and then talk with the you know i, I don't feel like i'm talking with the people i feel like we are basically giving what we have and we don't have that uh, 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 virtue of interact what do you think you know do, do you it's feel the same as i do yeah, you know what the, the wonderful thing about us, about human beings, about, about Muslims, uh, we are people that make adjustments. And um, certainly we like it. We, you know, my, my masjid, we're well known for all of the salats. I mean, we, had, we have a Juma prayer. We have hundreds of people inside. Um, we, before the pandemic, we averaged like 1,300 people for Juma prayer. Um, when Juma prayer happened during the pandemic, a lot of people couldn't get in. We had hundreds of brothers praying on the outside, you know, trying to get into the masjid every salat. But we are people of resiliency. That's how human beings are, that we're always getting tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the ideal is to come to the masjid, to have these meetings, to have the in jama'a, to pray in jama'a, all those things. Uh, but when we have uh, situations like this, like the pandemic, then we have to make adjustments. And so that human beings are, are very resilient and they're able to do what we can. You know, you can't stop us, alhamdulillah. Then we have, we have the virtues. 
and then we do what we can until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. We do everything that we can as human beings, and then in the end, uh, we try to do the very, very best that we can. Black people are used to that, by the way. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, making, will... making, making adjustments, making adjustments. So uh, we have to also do the same thing. Yeah, we will get to that, you know, very quickly. But, uh, you know, with that resiliency, uh, it opens also a door for controversy. Because I remember that, uh, you know, when we got into this virtual prayer, whether, uh, you know, the Imam can get into the masjid when very few people were allowed to get inside. So, uh, you know, there was this controversy between people of knowledge, whether we can have virtual Imam leading Salat and people praying Taraweeh behind him. And we started to discuss that back and forth. I don't know if you had this, uh, uh, controversy that was settled afterwards, but still people Sheikh, disagreed with each other. Sheikh, it's okay. You know, you know, one thing that I learned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we got this um, from the Messenger of Allah. So many Muslims, they say, Kefa halukum, Habibi, Kefa halukum. And, you know, people say, yes, it means how you're doing. It does, but, and really the Arabic word, and you know Arabic better than me, I'm the student here, the word hal in Arabic means condition, circumstances. Absolutely. So when you say, halukum, you're really saying, how's your circumstances? How's your situation? And um, and one thing I learned about Allah from, from the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, is that Allah will always ask you the question, well, why did you do it? And I'll give you, I'll give you one example. Very I think it's a yes. good example, right? Um, here's a, a man who gathered his sons together and said that um, I'm going to die. And I want you to make me a promise that when I die, I want you to burn my body and take the ashes, wait for windy day and throw it in, into the, to, to the ocean. And they did that. He died. And his sons did exactly what the father asked them to do. They burned his body and they threw his ashes in the, in the ocean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, Allah Allah does what he pleases. So he gathered those ashes together and brought that man back to life. And he asked them, and whenever Allah asks a question, he never asks a question because he don't know the answer. He asks a question to teach us a lesson. He said, why did you do it? Uh, he said, Min khashetika, ya Rabb. this man had never, he said, I never did any good in my life. And when Allah uh, gather me, he's going to punish me. So the man said, Min khashetika, ya Rabb, from fear of you. And Allah forgave him his sins. Can you imagine that? Um, so Allah is teaching us a lesson. And the reason I say that is that uh, there is always a way out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the Prophet said, Inna hal, uh, inna wa haram that which is halal is, is, is clear. That which is haram is clear, but in between the doubtful matters, not many people know about. So when these issues come up, um, we have to make decisions. Can we? The same issue came up. We ask our scholars. I'm not. A, I'm not a scholar, but we ask our scholars, uh, you know, about it. So alhamdulillah, you know, you're going to always have uh, differences of opinion. And Sheikh, I want to make, I want to say one other thing before, before we continue. Please. That I think that uh, this thing of uh, opinion is very important. Uh, when the Prophet والسلام, went to Medina, uh, he saw the people pollinating date palms. And he said, what are you doing? He said, well, we're manipulating the, the date palms so that we get um, a better um, product. And the Prophet said, well, maybe, maybe you shouldn't do it. So they stopped doing it. As a result, the crops failed. Yes. And they came back to the Prophet والسلام, and said, see, this is what we're talking about. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, said something that's so profound. I wish that every president, prime minister, you know, every uh, uh, governor, uh, every uh, legislator would listen to what he said. He said, he said, إِذَا أَمَتَكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ دِينُكُمْ فَخُذُوا بِهِ Whenever I tell you something of a religion, you, you take it. But when I give you something of my opinion, 
I'm only a human being. So what does that mean? He, we, you know, we're human being. When the Prophet alayhi salat wasalam says something, the other, he is, is when it's wahi, when it's revelation, okay. But when we have an opinion, where should we fight in the in the battle of Badr? Then it's open for yes. people's suggestion. Absolutely. And so the the wonderful thing about Allah is that He is very merciful, and He gives us an opportunity to have these different opinions. And and I and I say this, I am very grateful uh, to have studied under uh, great teachers who taught us the beauty of um, having having differences of opinion. One of my favorite books, I think, Alam Abab Arba, and it's the fic of the uh, four schools of thought. And I love to see how the scholars, when they have these very different different opinions about different issues. Alhamdulillah. Imam Siraj, you know, this is the reason I mentioned this, so that we hear it from you through your beautiful examples that it's okay to have disagreements. Absolutely. You know, as long as the hearts stay united, then disagreements, you know, just express, you know, our intellectual capacities, our ways of doing things differently. Otherwise, everything would have been sent in revelation and we couldn't have, you know, uh, gone astray from even one letter or one word. You know, this yeah. is one thing I want to mention. The reason people love to listen to you is that you demonstrate through examples what, you know, the lesson is supposed to be. Now, if I don't come back to the Black History Month, you know, I will be fired. So, <laughs> so let me let me quickly come back to the reason that we invited our beloved Imam Siraj to virtual London uh, to talk about this uh, month. Now, again, the same as I expressed my sentiments about Zoom, I would like to mention something and please correct me. Uh, you know, there are now so many month celebrations. There is the uh, uh, Islamic History Month. There is the Black History Month. There is, uh, you know, so many different occasions that we uphold and celebrate either on a certain day or uh, on a certain, uh, uh, during a certain month. But don't you think that will make us focus attention on the subject matter for a particular period, then forget about it for the rest of the year. Now, everybody is talking about Black history during the month of February, but shouldn't we engage in that awareness throughout the year? Please, you know, uh, I would like to, to, to hear your opinion on that. Yeah. Sheikh, you know, I, I appreciate um, I appreciate this, you know, Black Black Awareness Month or Black History Month and stuff like that. And, and yeah, we should see one thing about Islam that's beautiful is that we care about all of mankind. And that's the kulhum benu Adam Adam in Torab. The um, all of mankind are the children of Adam, as Adam was created of, of dust. For us, as as you know, as Muslims. It doesn't make a difference of our color. In Allah Ta'ala, لَا يَنْذُرُوا إِلَىٰ أَسَامِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ سَوَادِكُمْ وَلَاكِنْ يَنْذُرُوا إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah doesn't, you know, look at your bodies on your forms. Uh, Sheikh Munir, I, I want you to hear what I'm going to say. And, 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 and this is a very important point that I'm going to make. Um, I have many identities, like all of us have different identities. And maybe you didn't notice, Anna Aswad, right? I'm, I'm black. You know, Sheikh Munir? I love being black. I can't wait to wake up every morning black, you know? But why? Why, why, why I'm so happy to be black? Because Allah said, It's Allah who created you in the womb as he pleased. If Allah created me a black man, I'm happy to be a black man. But also, Sheikh, I'm American. I'm American. I'm born here as, a, as an American. So I'm black, I'm American. Um, and um, Anna Afrikiyun, I'm African. And even though I was born in, in, in America, but my ancestors are from Africa. So I am a descendant of a former slave. Sheikh Munir, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to switch yes, up. Yes, please. Please. Um, Don't make it difficult, please. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that is not difficult. Okay. Um, this, this, you know my name. 
What's my name? We know you as Siraj Wahaj. Okay. Was I born as Siraj Wahaj? No, I know that you were not born as Siraj Wahaj. Okay. My point, exactly, right? Um, uh, one time I was having an argument with some Muslims and, and they were saying that uh, Jesus, alayhi salat was, was salam, uh, you know, had a father. And I said, he didn't, no, of course, he didn't have a father. Um, they said, yes, he did. I said, when you look at the Quran, it's called the Isa ibn Maryam. Jesus, the son of Mary. And the last in Quran, called them by their father's name. He didn't have a father. He had a mother, Maryam. So that's a, a proof. Yes, that's a proof in itself. So my name, um, you may be hearing it for the first time. I'm not sure. My name was, I was born Jeffrey Kears. J-E-F-F-R-E-Y, Kears, K-E-A-R-S-E. -E. Uh, two days ago, I called my brother, alhamdulillah, uh, my brother had just celebrated uh, his 70, I think 73rd birthday. And uh, he said, Saraj Wahaj, Assalamu Alaikum. Now my brother is not a Muslim, but that's how he greeted me, Saraj Wahaj. My, my brother named Gregory Kears, right? Our father's name was Willie Kears. But the problem is that's not my real name. That's not my father's real name. That's the slave name. And so when black people were slaves, the slave owners showed ownership by giving the slaves their name. So somewhere along the line in my ancestor, there were some slaves called Kares and those we were descendants. So I, I took a long time, Sheikh, when I became a Muslim and I noticed that so many African-Americans, so many of them, they changed the name to, to Muslim names. And I, and I did the same thing. I took my mother's permission and my mother was okay with it. She calls me, so my mother have two names for me. She calls me Saraj or she calls me Marshmallow. When I was a young, when I was a young boy, she called me Marshmallow. So whenever she sees me, my Marshmallow, my Marshmallow. Uh, so I, I think that uh, when you look, Sheikh, now turn on CNN, MSNBC, and you see African-American men and women, you notice something different. They look different. They dress differently. You know why? Because in the 60s, there was a change of black people, you know, finding their identity, finding who they really were. Even black people who didn't, who, who didn't call themselves Muslims were changing their names to African names and, and Arabic names and, 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 and things like that, studying our history. So though I understand what you're saying that, yes, we should study these things every day, and we do, but you know, alhamdulillah, that we have a month that we set aside and say, you know what, let's take this month, let's commemorate uh, the contributions of African Americans, let's understand the history, let's understand what they face. But Martin Luther King Jr., by the way, Sheikh, there were two people that I really loved um, uh, in, in the African American struggle. One, a Muslim, Malcolm X, Al Haj Malik Shabazz, that was my guy. My mother would tell you that when I was a young man, I would go around in the house quoting Malcolm X. Back during slavery, there were two kinds of slaves. There was the field Negro and the house Negro. So Malcolm X. And then the other one, um, Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. Martin Luther King Jr., Christian, loved him. We loved Malcolm X. We loved um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And Martin Luther King Jr. said, he who gets behind in a race must forever remain behind or run faster than the man up front. So these men and others like them and women fighting for justice for, for, for black people. So alhamdulillah, I take it. If they want to give me one day out of the year, I'll take it. If they want to give me one month, I'll take it. And then alhamdulillah, every day we have a right to talk about any injustice done to anyone everywhere so i think that what muslims have to do and the people of the world have to do is look around the world and see all oh, where people are suffering whether it's in china uh wh whether it's um in burma and all over the world we should we should uh fight to bring about justice absolutely imam siraj i i uh you know i hear you very clearly you mentioned the word identity so many times uh, you know, I can see how passionate you are about your roots. And, you know, when you said that 
when I wake up in the morning, I want to see myself black. You are not trying to become someone else. You are sticking to your identity. You are, uh, uh, you know, uh, embracing your family. Uh, you know, you are not distancing yourself by becoming a Muslim from your brother who is still a Christian, uh, from, uh, you know, a role model, Martin Luther King. You are not saying that, you know, Muslims cannot now associate through their identity with, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all those lessons and I know that joining us tonight are so many young people and I hope that they are getting the lesson that by them become, uh, uh, you know, Canadianized in a certain way. And by that word, I mean that some of them think that they have to dissociate themselves from their roots in order to appear uh, as Canadian as it could be. But let me mention that Canada is multicultural, uh, yeah. diverse, uh, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, and we have to stand out in this beautiful mixture, mosaic of, of wealth uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and say, here I am, I am who I am. So, you know, this is a beautiful lesson that you gave us. Well, let me add something too, very, very something yes. very interesting. You know, the prophet peace and blessing be upon him said um, um, that, that human beings are born in the fitra. al fitra. But every human being by nature is born by a nature, I believe in. Um, but their parents make them different religions, make them Jewish, you know, make them uh, Christians, make them Sabians, right? So I'm, I'm telling you something that happened to me when I was seven years old. Um, uh, it was, it was Sunday morning. I was living in Marcy Projects. And I was getting ready to go to church, right? And as I'm dressing, I said to my mother, I said, Mom, why we got to go to church anyway? Why? And I said it like that. Why we got to, you know, like defiantly, right? So my mother, she took out a belt. I was going to say spanking. that. You got your spanking. <laughs> there you go. Not a big spanking, like two times. Boop, boop. And then she <laughs> said to me, now you understand why you got to go to church? I said, yes, ma'am. But I didn't understand. But you know what, Sheikh? Not only was I a Christian, but I was a Baptist. And um, uh, the reason that I was a Baptist, my mother and father, they were Baptists, right? So alhamdulillah, fast forward, uh, last Tuesday, I went to go visit my mom, 89 years old. She is so adorable. And um, it is always, I go, I have a ritual. When I go visit her, I bring her a big bouquet, bouquet of flowers. That's, she loves my flowers. So my marshmallow brought me flowers. My marshmallow, Imam Saraj bought me flowers. So, um, so Tuesday, uh, I was speaking to my mom and I said, you know, mom, um, I know that you believe in the oneness of God. And she said, absolutely. But we talk all the time. And then she said, and Muhammad is his messenger. Yeah. So my mother at the age of 89 years old, last Tuesday took Shahada Allah and she Allah became Allah. Muslim. So, I mean, look at the irony, right? I'm look getting goosebumps. Ah, I know, I'm of course. getting goosebumps. I know, but look yeah. at the irony, Sheikh. Look yeah. at the irony, right? She made me a Christian and through the hands of her son, she becomes Muslim. And my daughter was there to witness my daughter Sharifa. She's a Muslim and she witnessed it. And alhamdulillah, uh, my daughter Sharifa and her husband just bought a new house in Far Rockaway. And they took my mother with them. So now my mother, she lives with them. We're happy because, you know, she was living by herself. I go visit her, of course, all the time. But now she's around family. And, and, um, and it is such a great, great, great honor. And I'm saying to, to highlight the point that you made is that, you know, all of us are the, are, you know, the children, the children of Allah, you know, we are, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the children of Adam. Um, and so we have the responsibility to have good relationships with the people, good relationship with the Canadians. And I, I, I agree with you, good relationships with um, our neighbors in the United States. You know, Sheikh, one third of the Muslim Ummah live in non-Muslim countries. So we are a minority in the United States, maybe 1% of, of, the, of the population Muslims, maybe 2%. Uh, New York City is a little bit different. Uh, we have 1,300,000 Muslims in New York City, 1,300,000, and we have over 300 masjids in New York City. 
but some some areas have one masjid in the whole city. So our responsibility as Muslims is not just for ourselves. My responsi responsibility as a Muslim is not just to the African Americans, not just black people. I am. We love them. But this is a, a relationship that we have with all of the people. Sheikh Manel, exactly as you said, um, Sir Isaac Newton said that I can calculate the movement of the stars, but not of the madness of man. So we have seen in the history of, of, of mankind um, this injustice. And I say the thing that we have to do, uh, Islam is a, it's a religion of, of justice, you know, and, and there is no compulsion. La ikra fiddin, there's no compulsion Absolutely. in religion. Absolutely. So we're supposed to be good to our neighbors. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's the beautiful thing about it, you know, as, as a Muslim, you know, I am, you know, a, uh, a citizen of the entire world and, and, and just, just wonderful. It's, it's great. How beautiful. You know, very beautiful nice. relationships with our neighbors. Our neighbors are not Muslims, but they, we talk all the time. There's a young man across the street. You know, we talk, we talk basketball. Sheikh, I don't know if you know anything about basketball at all. Canada, yes. yeah, yeah, Canada is not famous for basketball. Maybe more, more uh, ice hockey, stuff like that, right? But um, please in, be in America, careful. You know, we have the Raptors in Toronto, so please yeah, be careful. Won the championship a couple of years ago. I got you. Right? <laughs> I got to check you. I got to check you. Come on. Yeah, I know. Here we go. <laughs> but, but I think that, um, in fact, you find now in, in sports in, in the United States, many Muslims, many Muslims in the Congress of the United States, many Muslims in, 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 in the Air Force, in the Army, uh, many uh, Muslims in, in government. We have many Muslims in our government. And by, by the way, uh, there's a city uh, in, in America, um, Hamtramck. It's a city near uh, uh, Detroit. For the first time in the history of that city, the mayor is Muslim. Yes, yes, I and heard about that. Entire, the entire city council Muslim. Muslim, yes. Every one of them. Yes. So we have Muslims integrated. And and I, I believe, Sheikh, I honestly believe that one day there'll be a Muslim president of the United States of America. I'm I'm Why not? sure. Why not? Yes. And that Muslim and that Muslim president, if it if it comes about, he's not only looking out for the interests of the Muslims, he's into he's looking out for the interests of the 300 million uh, Americans, whatever their religion is, even you know, if they don't have a religion, if they choose not, he is the president of everyone and he has to take in consideration everyone. How about how about that? Siraj Wahaj for president. No, 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 no. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me listen. Yeah. I thought about. Let me tell. You, I thought about this. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Years ago, uh, the Muslims in New York City, uh, the leadership uh, had planned. I didn't know about it. They had planned to um, to to vote me to you know to help me to become the mayor of New York City. I said no, 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 no. That's not me, Sheikh. If you give me a hundred billion dollars, I would not want to be the president of the United States of America. I respect the position so much. It is a very, very difficult job. And I think it's the height of arrogance of people who think they can do the job by themselves. So it is a very, very, um, it's a big position. It's a, a position of tremendous responsibility. And uh, no, I have no ambitions like that, but whoever, you know, the president is, whether he's a Muslim or Christian or Jew or whatever, and we should want him to do the best for the community. And I got that from the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. He talked about, um, people being on a boat, good people and bad people. And the yes, bad people exactly, begin to yes. drill a hole in the boat. And the prophet said, alayhi salat wa salam, if you stop him, you save him and yourself. And if you let him go, you destroy him and yourself. And so therefore I have a vested interest. Who's gonna be the president of the United States of America? Who's gonna be the president of, 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 of um, Canada and wherever we all have a vested interest. You know, you reminded me uh, uh, a few years back, I was doing a radio program uh, on one of the local, uh, you know, radio stations in London, and it was called Islamic Perspectives. And I still remember that on the last episode, we had to stop this program because we ran out of funds. And on the last episode, I received a phone call from a Catholic nun you know, who started to cry. She said, why are you doing this? You should continue because we learned a lot about your religion, about Islam. And this way we get to know each other. I will never forget that, you know, 
my whole life. And that's why today you spoke about what we call in Islamic terminology, da'wah, which is sharing our way of life with others. This is why the Almighty told us in chapter, which we call Surah number 49, verse 13, that we created you from one pair, a male and a female, and multiplied you unto nations and tribes so that you may come to know one another. You know, and that's why we should extend our hands and share our rich heritage. And, and, you know, whether we are black, whether we are Pakistani, whether we are, uh, you know, we should just come together and, and share our heritage with each other. You know, one thing, you wanted to say something. I was yeah, going to yeah. tell you something interesting that um, something about me you probably didn't, didn't know. Uh, when I was born, I learned many years ago, when my uncle saw me at birth, he says, he's going to be a preacher. A preacher mean a, mean a minister, like in the Christian church. It's a preacher, right? Yes, yes. And, um, and, I, and I always knew that. But what I found out recently uh, when I went to visit my mother, she said that not only did my, my uncle say that when my aunt saw me, she said, he's going, to be, he's going to be a preacher, right? So it's interesting. When I was in the church, when I was a teenager, uh, I, I taught Sunday school. So every Sunday, in fact, me and my brother got an award for 100% attendance in the church. So I used to teach Sunday school, teach from the Bible. Uh, in 1969, when I joined the Nation of Islam, uh, I, I became a minister in the Nation of Islam. In 1975, when I became a Muslim, a follower of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, an un unapologetic follower of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, I became an imam. Yes. Uh, Sunday school, minister in the nation of Islam, like Malcolm X was a minister in the nation of Islam. Imam Saraj was a minister in the nation of Islam. And then, alhamdulillah, becoming a Muslim uh, and becoming an imam. So there's something, I don't know what they saw. And I don't know, was it my, my big head? I don't know what it was. But, and, I, and I'm telling you, Sheikh, honestly, uh, what I do as an imam, there's nothing in the world that I would rather do. When I was young, I played basketball. I played basketball for my, my university, New York University. Um, when I was in uh, Dallas, Texas last week, and Yassir Khalidi's masjid, you know, they had a beautiful masjid. I gave a talk, and they heard that I used to play basketball. They insisted that I go to the gym and, and shoot some basket, basketballs. Uh, so um, I'm saying that they, you get a lot of money playing basketball. You're talking about Toronto, you know, and the basketball team. These players, they get, they get a lot. They get hundreds of millions of dollars. Absolutely. If you gave me a choice, you know, to play basketball, play a game to get money or to get the few dollars that I get as, as an imam. Imams, I don't know about Toronto, but imams in New York, they don't get a, they don't get a big salary. But you know what? I don't care. I love I love serving, and um and I love the, the Islam and the reason that I love the Islam because there's something special, the emphasis of Islam, uh, is special and it's and the emphasis is on justice, and as you know in Harvard uh, Harvard Law School, in the entrance of the faculty library hangs a verse from the Quran. They call it one of the greatest expressions of justice in the history of the world. Oh, you who believe, stand out firmly as witnesses for Allah, uh, you know, even against yourself or your parents or your, your relatives against the rich or the poor. So the emphasis of, of Islam is on justice. You know, there are over 4,000 black people that were lynched. They were lynched. Um, and the only reason that they were lynched is because the, 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 the color of their skin. Black children who wanted to go to, you know, uh, um, universities and colleges that are all white had to be escorted by the army in order to go there just to get an education, you know, and, you know, and black people couldn't, couldn't live everywhere. They had to live in, in the ghetto. So people know about slavery, but a lot of people don't know what happened after slavery so that you had people like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X and Haj Malik Shabazz and so many fighting for justice. Uh, Sheikh, I don't know if you've been studying rest, right now what's happening in, in America. You know, you have New York City, where I'm from, the mayor 
is African American. Yes. Uh, uh, Eric Adams, we know him very well. He's been to the Masjid. Uh, he has a great respect for us. So the so the mayor of New York City, African American. The mayor of uh, Chicago, African American. Charlotte, North Carolina, African American. Denver, Colorado, Africa, African American. Maryland, African American. Um, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, African American, and Which many is something. Uh, yes, you know, this, is, this is sending a message that skin color is totally irrelevant. You know, uh, one of the uh, comments in the chat, you know, was was mentioning exactly that that the skin color is totally irrelevant because it's our contribution as human beings, and that's why we have to stand tall and be proud. And, you know, a, a minute ago, you mentioned something which I felt was taken, you know, from Surat Fussilat, ayah number 36, where the Almighty tells us very clearly, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ You said that if they will give you the millions of dollars, that other people get as salaries and the few dollars you get as an imam, you will choose to become an imam because you are answering the call of God who is better in speech than them who call to the path of God and proudly, proudly declare that we are among the Muslims. You know, so Alhamdulillah that you are giving this, this example for young people to be proud of their identity, irrespective of their skin color. You know, I, I want you to comment since, you know, I'm trying to race with time because, you know, the world today, we are seeing the Uyghur brothers and sisters suffering, you know, in China. We are seeing the Rohingyas suffering. We are seeing the Palestinians, you know, yesterday, a 16 years old was killed by a sniper you know, uh, just because he was standing to protest that his father's house was being demolished. You know, uh, uh, we are seeing people suffering uh, in India simply because, you know, our sisters are putting their hijab. And, and you know, we are finding that many Muslim governments are standing motionless, so to speak, doing nothing. You know, what's, what's your... Uh, 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 you know, uh, hope for the future as these things are evolving throughout the world vis-a-vis -vis Muslims. You know, I, Sheikh, I'm, I'm, I can't help but be a, a person of, of great hope. And um, but hope without action is not is not is not good enough. I um, uh, I, I feel you know my, you know my greatest day, Sheikh, as a day. My greatest day, I gave a, a lecture at a university, Texas State University. I'll never forget that day. It was um, during the Easter break. And, um, and uh, I was invited by the Muslim Student Association. And the auditorium was a huge auditorium. Shake, every seat was taken. And the people, they, they sat in the, uh, you know, in, the, uh, in the aisles. They stood up in the back. The door was open and people outside and every, I mean, it was packed. And the um, Texas State University, I'll never forget this. Um, and the students gave me a talk, the MSA. They said, Imam, we want you to give the lecture. Um, what did Jesus really say? And I told them, I don't like that topic. So when I told us, I'm talking about the audience was like 90, 95, 96% white, the Christian belt, right? I said, if I gave that talk, what did Jesus really say? I'm implying you guys don't know what Jesus said. Imam Siraj is going to tell you. So oh, instead of giving that talk, I gave the talk, what the Muslims say about, about Jesus. And, um, and I remember right before I spoke, uh, the, uh, the, the, the professor who introduced me, uh, he said to me, Imam Siraj, many of these students at a certain hour are going to have to leave. So in the middle of your lecture, a large number of them will walk out. I want to let you know it's not because of you. I gave the talk, Sheikh, and not one person left. Not one. And when I was finished, I said, you know, uh, we have to pray now. If you give me five minutes, I'll come back. And I said to myself, I knew that many of them would go. I came back, Sheikh, not one person left. Had the question and answer period. And there was uh, one man, a young man, 
um, name, I think his name was um, Ron Geiger, something like that, um, 22 years old. He was the head of the Christian organization on campus and he asked me questions. And um, in our, his questions weren't like to challenge me, it was like to learn. I didn't use one verse from the Bible. Everything I spoke was from the Quran. I told them how how Muslims love Jesus and that the day of judgment would not happen until the return of Jesus. And I told them what the Prophet said, either amana rajulu bi isa thuma amana bi falu ajrani. Whoever believes in Jesus and then believes in me will have a double reward. Make a long story short, um, about a couple of weeks after that program, and, and I said to myself that that man, that young man, if I ever believed that someone would be a Muslim, it would be him. And I loved him. I loved him as a person in humanity, really I fell in love with him. Two weeks later, his mother wrote me a letter. So Imam Saraj Wahaj, um, I got your, um, your, your, your contact from my son. You had a profound effect on him. I want to let you know that. And I wanted to let you, your, your contact was in his wallet. And she said, I wanted to let you know that my son uh, was in a car accident and they and he died and it was a very sad day for me and um but i want you to think about that white woman that mother who took the time to write an african-american muslim imam so they must have if i had said so someone definitely would become muslim i would have said him and I, I fell in love with that young man 22 years old and i'm saying that was my greatest day as a die and Sheikh, you you're right. It's to share this message. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't force people to 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 believe. And Allah mentioned Quran that if it was His will, He would have made everybody the same. And people not cease to differ. So we have to respect that. Um, Muslims respect uh, the people of the book, the Christians and Jews, so much that Allah permit the men permitted for you to marry or the chaste women of the people of the book. Allah is telling us something that we have special relationship. You are permitted to eat the food of the people of the book. We have special uh, relationships, so we should build on that, and we should uh, share uh, our faith. Um, you know, and I think the good thing about me being African American and seeing my people oppressed is that I hate oppression uh, for anyone, uh, whether it's, it's Muslims in, in you know in in in, in China or Muslims in Palestine wherever they are, where anybody is oppressed, but you know, certainly uh, we make a prayer to Allah to relieve the people. Then we do everything that we can as, as human beings. Proud to be black. But for me, of all of my identities, the most important is, is I'm a Muslim. Why? Because in the end, there will not be one black person in Jannah, in paradise, because they are black. And there will be not one white person in hell because they are a white no that Allah is going to look at our hearts and our deeds and i just I, i'm telling you shake i love i love people you know i was on the british airlines right once i'm going to england I'm going to london and the uh flight attendant said sir would you would you like some wine i said i would love some wine but i'm a muslim and i'm not allowed to drink wine so the guy next to me he bust out laughing he ha he talked to me the entire trip a non-muslim white man on British Airways spoke to me in the whole trip just because of that one thing, the humanness, the, you know, the talking to them. And, and I love, I love talking to people, Sheikh. I love people. Uh, I just, I just love people. Alhamdulillah, Allah put in my heart. I can't, I can't hear you. Yeah, you have to unmute, Dr. Okay. Well, go ahead, Sheikh. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you, Sheikh. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, right from the Quran, you know, as you were talking, I was reading what the Almighty told us, call to the path of your Lord with wisdom and good admonition. You know, had you been uh, uh, rude with people, uh, uh, with a stiff heart, they would have scattered from around you. So this is, this is how important it is to bring the Quran into life, not only to recite the Quran, but to live the Quran. And as I'm listening to you, and as everyone is listening to you, we are getting a lesson in, uh, let us let us 
live the Quran, not only recite it during the month of Ramadan. You know, I, I wish that we had the three hours to keep going, but I want to mention one thing uh, uh, that now some people think in order to bring people together, Jews, Christians, Muslims, let us, you know, make a new, uh, uh, you know, mix of all of these three religions and we will call it the Abrahamic religions. And, and you know, there are many people who are talking about that. And, and, you know, we all know that we don't need to dilute Islam or dilute Christianity or dilute, you know, for us being the final revelation, we don't need to apologize for anything in the Quran or for who we are. So I, I'd like to hear, you know, some comments from you about the Abrahamic proposed religion. What do you think of that? No, I don't think we should. No, we can't. We have to follow our religion, you know, and that's why I mentioned in my, in my talk about the permissibility to eat the food of the people of the book and to marry the people of the book. So alhamdulillah, we are, you know, um, Umatin Wahidan. Sheikh, in 1991, you know, first of all, let me say this about, about my country. Yes. In the sessions of Congress, we never have a session of Congress unless it's, it's, it begins with an invocation by a Jewish rabbi or Christian minister. That was the history of this country. In 1991, um, they decided to let a Muslim open up a session of Congress. And Sheikh Munir, you know what Muslim that was? Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> Please tell us. <laughs> Please <laughs> tell Imam, us. It was Imam Saraj Wahaj. And what yes. I want the people to do, I want you to Google Saraj Wahaj, United States Congress, 1991. And you'll see a picture of me. And the picture that you'll see is the picture that you see basically now. I had my, my beard. I wore, I wore a, a, a kameez and have, have a kufi. Now, why did I do that? How come I didn't put a suit and tie on? I could have put a suit and tie. I've worn suit and ties before. But I wanted to send a signal that I'm a Muslim and proud to be Muslim. This is who I am. I found out that day um, my friends from Saudi Arabia called me. See, Imam Siraj. Every 15 minutes, they're playing you in the session, open up a session of Congress. You know, how proud they were. People in Africa, people in Asia, all over the world was calling me and saying, wow, Imam, we saw you on TV, you opened up a session of Congress. Now, I'm not against suit and ties, I'm not. Um, I remember once um, I was a character witness for a Muslim on trial. I wore a suit and tie because I think by, by, by the, uh, you know, the jury seeing me with a suit and tie, they had a they had a better feeling that if I was dressed like this, they said, "Oh, we're going to get we're going to convict that guy." Uh, also, the great debate between Ahmed Didat and Jimmy Swaggett. Yes. Um, you know, I was the moderator. You know that, right? Yes. Yes, and I, I was, do. Yes. What, how was I I've dressed? watched it a few times. Okay. How was I dressed? Yes. I suit and tie on. Yes. So, alhamdulillah, I'm, told, I'm not against that, but I'm saying that I am proud to be a Muslim, and you know, uh, I, I had practice. As a black man, I was a minority. In my country, Islam is the minority religion. But alhamdulillah, uh, the, the, we, are, we are proud. Everyone having you know, their distinct holidays, we respect that. But I'm a Muslim. Christian, Jew, alhamdulillah, we, we, we respect all of their religions. Bad. There it goes. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Okay. Inshallah. Shout out to Sister Ziba for uh, finding the picture for us. <laughs> I like that. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, Imam Siraj, I, I really want your opinion on, on something that uh, we should take very seriously. I uh, read some statistics. Uh, they surveyed youth between the ages of 18 and 28 in continental America, that is USA and Canada. And they found that the continental average, 28% of those youth uh, did not identify with their faith that they were born into. And then they surveyed every faith tradition group by itself. And among Muslims, they found that the average was not too far apart from the continental average. 23% of those youth said they don't identify with Islam. 
And my worry is that social media, political influences, Islamophobia, which has become, you know, something that is taking lots of our energy, are affecting the way our young people are thinking. I need your recipe. I need your prescription. You know, how would you handle? You've done, you, you know, for Masjid at taqwa in New York, everybody knows now the story, what you did in your neighborhood. You know, so you were effective in changing lives. We would like to bring those young people back to the fold of faith. That's the only way to save them. What's your recipe? Yeah, the first one I want to say, I ain't got no recipe. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the first thing I want to say. But I'll say this, you know, I, I, I try to be um, realistic. Um, and Muawiyah, he said, La hakima illa du tajiba. There's no real wisdom without experience. So I've been around a long time. And I've come to, I drink from the Quran and, and the Hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him every day. I love the Quran. I, I read the Quran every day. I read the, the traditions of the Prophet every day and trying to understand uh, where we are. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, gave us a warning. He said, you will follow those who came before you, shibrin be shibrin, step by step, inch by inch, so that if they crawled in the hole of a lizard, you will fall right behind. So the same thing that is happening right now, uh, many people are losing their, their, their faith in England right now, from nine, since 1960, um, 10,000 churches have closed, you know, and another uh, 4,000 going to be closed in the next couple of years. And when you look around the world, you see a decline of religion. And so the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, warned us. He says, verily one of you will do the, the deeds of the people. Jannah hatta ma yakunna bainahu wa bainah ila dhira'in. People are doing the works of the people of Jannah. They're making their prayers, they're fasting, they're making pilgrimage, um, and they're doing all of these good deeds. They're the people of Jannah until they are just a half a length from, uh, from, from Jannah, and then they begin to do the deeds of the people of the hellfire for Yadakuluha, and they entered. What does that mean? That you got to, you got to, every moment, you got to guard your faith and make sure that you're still on the straight path. You got to make sure you're still praying. Sheikh, I remember once the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, was sitting in the masjid and a man came in. He made salat. And then he came to the prophet, alayhi salat wa salam, and said, Salam alaykum, ya Rasulullah. He said, wa alaykum salam, farajit fa salli, fa innaka lam tu salli. Go back and pray for you have not prayed. So this happened three times. And the third time, the man said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't know a better prayer than this. And so the prophet taught him, Sallu kemera itumunu isali. Say as you see me pray. Why I say that? In 1969, from 69 to 75, I never made one salat. I prayed, but I didn't pray the way the prophet taught us to pray. In 1975, uh, Imam Warthadi Muhammad became the leader of the nation of Islam. And he taught us that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, was the last messenger. He taught us how to make salat and all of that. Now, the ending of that hadith, some people do the deeds of the people of hellfire until they're this close to death. And then they begin to take do the deeds of the people of Jannah. Why do I say that? I'm saying that is that not to, you know, to get like, you know, complacent. No. But we have to work hard to save every Muslim. But we have Siraj, to... Can I say something? Please. The best time to get a promise to continue and write on the screen to be continued is when we hear something very exciting like this. You know, unfortunately, time controls everything. And everything. I'm looking at my clock and I'm told by the control room that we have to wrap it up three minutes, you know, to nine. And and I, I tell you, I enjoyed every second of it. And I know that Sheikh Harij is, is also uh, smiling, happy, but I'm asked, okay, that you need to promise us. Are you going to promise? I'll tell you what you have to promise it's us. Done. It's done, it's done, it's <laughs> done. Okay, done. So, so you, done. you will visit us again in the spring. 
Of course. Done. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah I, Akbar. I love you guys, man. You so, kidding me? So London, we love you too. We London, love you too. I love you. Okay. So here, I would like to thank you. And then I will, you know, hand it over to Sheikh Aris. And inshallah, we will see you in good health and good faith. And, and we love you, man. We love you all. Love you, man. Love you. Okay, Sheikh Aris. Barakallahu feek. Jazakallahu khairan. Sheikh Saraj Mahaj, it's always a pleasure to listen to you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Munir for facilitating and uh, allowing the, the discussion to go in a very fruitful direction. Uh, you know, like this I was an hour long. I, I just checked. I'm checking and monitoring the stream. Right. And I just noticed that, it, that we've been going for an hour and well, it didn't feel like an hour. So Alhamdulillah, that's an amazing, uh, that's an amazing testimony of how, uh, how, how um, engaging and how beneficial this event was. And we thank you uh, as always for being here with us. And we look forward to having you again in Shah Ta'ala in, um, in, in spring, be in light Ta'ala. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you, your, your, your pr pr presence in the community virtually and in person is always a blessing. We're always so barakallahu feek jazakallahu khairan for accepting that uh shata we will have another uh event be in the light ala on thursday this time uh we will have dr abdullah Hakim quick joining us uh, also virtually and uh it'll be the same time 8 p.m so i encourage you to join that as inshallah the link for our program will remain the same i also want to mention that on wednesday night which is tomorrow we have a lecture in uh on hadith uh that is it partly in Arabic, partly in English, also through the same medium on the same link. Uh, it's very beneficial. I encourage you to come out to these events Wednesday night for Hadith on Thursday, inshallah, ta for the Black History Month event with Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick. Uh, these are the programs. This is a way for us to keep in touch. It's a way for us to, you know, not lose sight of each other, even though we can't see each other right now. And inshallah, this is a way for us to keep our spirits uh, up and to, you know, learn and reflect and community. Jazakum mm -hmm. khair, everybody, for coming out. We appreciate you all, and we'll see you all again, inshallah, hopefully tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then definitely on Thursday for Dr. La Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick's lecture on Black History Month and celebrating it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.